being able to um, see the wildlife, to see the fish, to see the wild rice dancing with the flow of the current. It's just a very amazing place. It's all free diving, just snorkeling. Very unique experience in clear spring-fed water like this. My name is Nick Menchaca. I'm owner-operator of Atlas Environmental, and we're contractors with the Habitat Conservation Plan. I feel very blessed to be part of the project. We've been doing it for 10 years out here in the San Marcos River. The armored catfish are an aquarium release fish. This is one of the rivers in Texas that has been invaded by suckermouth armored catfish. They're from South America. They're common in the aquarium trade because they eat algae, they do well in aquaria. Uh, but unfortunately, that means that they're introduced into ecosystems where humans come in close contact with water. And the ecosystems they invade tend to look like aquaria. And so the San Marcos River is, is basically a giant aquarium very clear water, lots of vegetation, lots of algae for these fish to consume. I'm Josh Perkin. I'm an assistant professor at Texas A&M University. We're here for this project to try to understand how many fish are in the river and how we can adapt management of that population to control it to a better extent. There's no natural predators here for suckermouth armored catfish. So they go through um, rapid population growth and can start to overcrowd the river. They grow fast, they spawn young, um, they reproduce very rapidly. They have basically overpopulated to the point of outcompeting our native species. They'll burrow up under the bank, up underneath the concrete and uh, create like an undercut. We're concerned about their effects on the erosion that's happening and the bank collapse. This population in the San Marcos River is actively being controlled. So Atlas Environmental and Nick Manchaca are using spearfishing to suppress the population. You can just hook this around in your hand and then stretch out the rubber band and grip the front of the pole spear. And then whenever you release it, it shoots out. With the very rapid reload, it makes it a very efficient method of removal. It's the, the most selective form of fish removal. Very efficient in terms of removing the armored catfish as well as the tilapia. Definitely got harder over the years. Uh, they definitely know they're being hunted now. We do two tournaments a year, the biannual pole spear tournaments. We do have a free fish fry twice a year, which is mainly tilapia, but if we have a big enough armored catfish, we'll serve up those as well. We give out about 400 to 1,000 free tacos. Whenever the tournaments aren't going on, we have a year-round bounty program, which is free to participate. We have a dive board with a dive flag that we'll send you out with, and all the authorities recognize that, and uh, that'll keep you from getting in any trouble as long as you're just spearing armored catfish and tilapias. 14,000 armored catfish removed since uh, 2013. It's definitely a lot. We'll find out from the data where 508 came from. Mm -hmm. Our study is designed to enhance that control. Can we use really focused control where we spearfish in localized areas? Or are these fish moving long distances where they might be recolonizing areas where they've been removed? I'm gonna try and grab a couple of specimens. Excellent. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department funded this research. We work with the Meadows Center for Water and Environment at Texas State University. Those are the divers that do a lot of the underwater work, including catching the fish that we put the transmitters in, uh, and then monitoring and retrieving our sensors that are listening for those tagged fish. We use ultrasonic transmitters that emit signals. We had some underwater receivers that we pulled up. There you go, sir. Good job. Pulled data off of them from our fish that have tags in them that track their kind of movement and behavior. We have 13,936 records. We actually pulled out a specimen that was tagged. 
We were able to check on the recovery from the surgery that was required from that. We still don't know how quickly they grow. We don't know how old these fish get in this population. So we can learn a lot through a recapture of a specimen like this. And 74. Okay. Outside of the range of our stationary receivers, we ran the canoe system that had the hydrophone in it to try to narrow down where some of those fish are. We have not recorded a fish moving from where we released them in Sewell up to here. We want to know how many fish are in the river, where are they spending most of their time, and how much are they moving throughout the river. So we capture fish. We internally plant these transmitters, and we follow their movements. It's a hydrophone. We're listening for a fish with a transmitter in it. And what we're finding is the habitats where they're most abundant are the human-altered habitats, so banks that have been stabilized by concrete that's then eroding and crumbling in. Those are the places where we see their highest abundances. Uh, but by also looking in places with lower abundances, we can uh, eventually develop a population size estimate for the entirety of the river. To count the number of fish in the river, we use a raft. So, so we call it our lighted, immersible fish enumerator, or LIFE. So our LIFE raft, we float. You know, this is looking down at the bottom. And then these are just underwater lights uh, for at night. And then we put a GPS unit in here that tracks our path. It's tough to measure these fish because they hide and they're most active at night. And so a big part of our current project is to test for a measurable effect of the spearfishing with data that don't come from the spearfishers. So can we run our raft down the river and see a measurable reduction in the number of fish that are present as we go through the spearfishing tournaments? We would like to keep the ecosystem in a state that's as close as possible to its natural state. The natural state would be no suckermouth armored catfish. What we're hoping to achieve with this project is an idea of functional eradication. The ultimate goal would be just to minimize their impact as much as possible. People love the river. There's a lot of community involvement in the river, kind of community ownership of what they have here. It sure makes it easier to work with a water body that others are interested in preserving and conserving. I would say um, do not release any aquarium species into the river. You know, very bad for the river, and you know, also it's not going to necessarily survive because we're, we're hunting those fish. We're really trying to get it restored to its native state where we're not seeing quite as many invasive fish. They're definitely still out there, but uh, we're fighting the fight to keep the populations down and keep the native populations up.